and our own yog patanjali was the great exponent of yogic treatment patanjali shastra is there which treats you through yog and yogic treatment is based on the meaning of yog given under patanjali shastra is calculation yog means to add up your human energy with your mental energy with your spiritual energy all three energies when added up that is yog the actual true meaning of yog is calculation adding up so your physical mental and spiritual energies are added up to keep you fit that is yog for you so these are the varieties of medical sciences which i wanted to enlighten you about and allopathy is not the only one which you are going to deal as a lawyer of tomorrow these all streams of medical sciences and practitioners are available and they may come to your office any day a patient may come or the doctor may come because there are in bombay there are hard vaidya also hard vaidya are working on bones they are not mbbs but they fix up your bones so easily because they have understood that system and not everybody requires mbbs to do the treatment and it's not that they are quacks there are a lot huge section of society who believes in these hard vaidya because they really give relief to you they understand your bone structure they have been trained into that there's another music therapy people put headphones to your ears and through music you are treated so there are various streams i can go on but let's come back as a lawyer there are various statutes which you know related to medical science and that's a huge field called medical legal or medical jurisprudence having handled several medical legal cases representing several doctors in the courts of law i know that what are the areas of trouble so let's see what are the statutory provisions in respect of medical sciences beginning from the constitution of india the constitution of india under article 21 guarantees you right to life and what does the li life means life means a healthy life not an animal survival and if somebody breaches your right to life the remedy is under article 226 and 32 of the constitution of india you can move high court and supreme court seeking relief of your fundamental right apart from it if you have ever bothered to see directive principles of the state policy article 47 mandates for the successive and respective governments to develop public health article 51a a fundamental duty is to protect and promote environment you might have heard about the 
landmark judgments of MC Mehta versus Union of India. MC Mehta has been a activist who in the year 1987, MC Mehta versus Union of India, 1987 Supreme Court, Ganga water pollution case, then MC Mehta versus Union of India, 1996, air pollution case, that a right to breathe clean air is a right to life under Article 21 of the Constitution of India. You might have heard about a very, very ugly incident happened in the year 1984, which went up to the Supreme Court and became a landmark noted judgment of Union Carbide versus Union of India, 1992 Supreme Court, 1984. Methyl isocyanide, one of the chemical gas, extremely poisonous, leaked from its factory in Bhopal, which is also known as Bhopal gas tragedy. It was such a poisonous gas that according to official figures, 3,000 people died instantly in that very night of 3rd and 4th December 1984. In the night, during sleep, more than 3 lakh people got affected. In that very night, but the Statistics does not stop there because that methyl isocyanide gas was so poisonous, so dangerous that those who survived also developed bodily deformities and not only them, their successive generations are born with deformity. The compensation case went up to Supreme Court and it became Union Carbide versus Union of India, 1992 Supreme Court, a landmark judgment of right to life under Article 21 of the Constitution of India. With the advent of time, Consumer Protection Act was promulgated by the parliament and gradually the provisions of Consumer Protection Act, if you read, include not only the product but also services. And therefore, If you read section 2D subclause 2 of the Consumer Protection Act, the consumer is defined. Who is the consumer? A consumer is the one who either purchases a product or receives a service by paying a consideration. And therefore, section 210 defines service also. Where, where a service is something which is being obtained by a consumer from a person who has a skill to provide service against payment of consideration. Therefore, once you know consumer, once you know service, you have to know deficiency. If there is a deficiency in the service, so deficiency is also defined under section 21G of the Consumer Protection Act. If there is deficiency in the service, you are entitled for compensation. And with this definition, 
a landmark judgment of P.V. Shanta, 1996 Supreme Court came, where deficiency of service by the doctor is alleged. So the doctors have been brought into the ambit of Consumer Protection Act. Initially, there was a debate whether a patient and doctor are having a relationship of consumer and service provider. There was a debate. But then the Supreme Court and P.V. Shanta's judgment held that no. In P.V. Shanta's judgment, it's a very landmark important judgment, 1996 Supreme Court, where Supreme Court carved out distinction of the service provided by doctors. The Supreme Court said that there are, if the doctor or the hospital is providing free of charge treatment, like in the government hospitals, it happened. If you go to municipal hospital, the government hospital, you don't have to pay for the treatment. If it's a free of charge treatment, then you cannot seek compensation because the, you do not have the relationship of consumer and service provider. It's free of cost. Because if you have ever read contract act, a contract is only when there is an element of consideration into it. If the consideration is element is missing, then it's not a contract. And therefore, by that analogy and logic, the Supreme Court came to the conclusion that if the free of cost treatment is happening, then the patient is not the consumer and the doctor is not service provider. And if the treatment is free of cost, you cannot claim compensation under Consumer Protection Act. Then the second category is carved out that for some portion there is a charges, there is some portion it's free of cost. So whatever portion you are charged, you are a consumer. Whatever portion of treatment is free of cost, you are not a consumer. So it boiled down to the third category that you where you are paying for your services for treatment which is in private hospitals with a private doctor, then you have a relationship of consumer and service provider. So as a lawyer you must know that distinction. If a patient from a government hospital getting treatment and suffering comes to your office, you can safely say, sorry, you cannot approach consumer protection forum because you're not a consumer at all. So unless he produces the bills and receipt being paid to the doctor or to the hospital, you cannot invoke the consumer protection proceedings to your client. So be aware of these minutes being laid down, the parameters are being laid down by the Supreme Court. Then another important area is motor accident claims. As a lawyer, you may end up cross-examining doctors in the witness box because if somebody has suffered a motor accident, and has been a victim of accident, either he died or he suffered fatal injuries to his body. And he must have been treated by the doctor before the case lands into the court. First the treatment happens or if he died, then autopsy must have happened, post-mortem must have happened. And if you read Motor Vehicles Act, under the provisions of the Motor Vehicle Act, the compensation depends on the fatal accident on the basis of your permanent disability, temporary disability, death, on the basis of which there is a calculation of compensation. 